Hello and welcome back to Terrible 70s Sci-Fi Madness. In the last two entries in this series, I've talked about a movie that I think is interesting, which I don't like and don't recommend you watch. Strawberries. An egg. No, strawberries. Oh, well, I've never seen strawberries. And a movie that I do like and do recommend you watch. Bang! 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 So how about for this last one I've planned, I talk about a movie that I have no idea how to talk about. Zardoz speaks to you, his chosen ones. Starring Sean Connery and directed by John Borman, the director of Deliverance and The Exorcist 2, 1974's Zardoz once again proves that science fiction in the pre-Star Wars 1970s was an absolutely wild and experimental time. In fact, Zardoz takes that statement to the extreme, more than any other movie I can think of. The act of watching Zardoz is like trying to hand out balls of yarn for you to untangle, but it's also not subtle with its themes and ideas. The monster is a mirror. And when we look at him, we look into our own hidden faces. It's the ideas of brutality versus enlightenment, life versus death, the inherent dirtiness of being human brought against the desire of self-purification that Zardas deals with. Though, on the most plain level, it's also essentially a story of a bunch of rich nutcases living in exclusive bubbles, getting higher over the promise of human achievement. At least Ayn Rand is nowhere to be found. The basis of the setting is that it's the Scotland of 2293, which some 300 odd years ago was ravaged by some unspecified 70s apocalypse. It's so vague that you might as well just play a game of insert your favorite one here. For my purposes, let's just say that Brexit came a bit early. Now on these lands, a new hierarchy has arisen, the lowest echelon of which is the Brutals, who themselves are divided into the lower people wearing 70s blazers where he used to grow crops, and the Exterminators, the horseback riding mankini wearing Highlanders with guns keeping the farmers in line. At the very top of the hierarchy are the aforementioned rich nutcases, who through the drugs that they've been taking, have become sterile, immortal, able to telepathically communicate, and are kinda capable of small amounts of time travel. Maybe. They're essentially wizards, but it's totally technology, guys. Their main goal was to become holdouts for what's good about humanity, or at least what they deemed that to be. When one doesn't behave, they instantly age them, but they won't let them die. Instead, when one gets too old, they get carted off to an abandoned amusement park to dance to ballroom dance music. And when one dies or gets killed, they just regrow that person inside of a biotube. Though, again, all of this only applies to the upper class. The giant flying stone head you've been no doubt curious about is basically a transport chip for the grain that goes to the rich and for the guns and ammo that go to the exterminators. It also functions as a giant eugenic human cold storage unit and deity figure, but let's put a pin in those two things for now. All of this is somehow enabled by this diamond crystal magic orb supercomputer known only as the Tabernacle which, yes, Sean Connery ponders. Now that's the groundwork, so what's actually happening in the movie? The movie starts off with a sequence they added in post because test audiences didn't know what the fuck this movie was. Though, basically, it boils down to the self-proclaimed magician with the painted-on beard Arthur Fleck saying, Here it be, our funny yet fictitious adventure about death, tragedy, comedy, and irony. Buckle your fuckles. He's the guy who flies the giant head which the exterminators worship as a god. The gun is good. The gun is good! The penis is evil. The head is kind of like a gun control politician from the Bizarro universe, which is something I'm sure every American can appreciate. Sean Connery, one of the exterminators, sneaks aboard the head during one of the grain loading sessions, kills the magician, <laughs> clashing with him in the clouds, you might say to which Sean Connery uses that head to travel to one of the bubbles, where he lands in front of Cadicarus's house, in which he finds one of the magic computer rings, which opens a grocery list where everything is spelled wrong, because these people thought the world would be improved by spelling carrots like this. I'm not saying that they're wrong. Bumbling about, he comes in contact with Consuela, no. 
and her assistant Mei who capture him with their psychic powers and want to use him to learn how to live and die in the real world again, instead of the rotten ways of their pseudo rural new age sci-fi plastic colony. They learn that Connery is actually much smarter than them because of Arthur's eugenics, so they run him through everything. Connery remembers that he came there to lead the revolution because Kid Icarus is would you kindly lead him into discovering that Zardoz is just an elaborate pop culture reference and that it's actually like Wizard of Oz. No. 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 Zardoz! Zardoz is pleased. Where it's all just a man behind a curtain. It was I who led you to the Wizard of Oz book. <laughs> but at least Zardoz is not some elaborate scheme from a shitty writer to cross promote his own sci-fi stories. So at least the Zardoz cult got that over Scientology. There's a series of weird batshit moments because did you really expect there not to be? And it turns out that Sean Connery's sweat cures the people that were left catatonic by the rich people drugs. Those formerly catatonic people start a riot and in the end all the people Sean Connery managed to gather around himself Touch him, sharing their collective brain knowledge with him in a second. We will touch teach you, and you will give us your seed. There's that small bit of time travel, and they destroy the supercomputer neural network thing, disabling infinite respawns, so that now with the help of the Brutals, who thanks to Sean Connery, now know how to clip through the invisible wall, this group of false superhumans are finally allowed the chance to move on from their passionless, pretentious lives. By being killed, of course. Kill me too. And after all that shit is over, Sean Connery acquires wife, sits in one spot for 40 years, returns to Caveman, and fucking dies. And I'd wager only like half of that was what was actually going on. As mentioned, Zardoz is an experience that is steeped in untanglement. It has a lot of abstractions, is told non-linearly, and the actual goal of the movie is, from what I can tell, to keep you thinking. Which it does well. But brass tacks, how much you get out of Zardoz is about as much as you want to get out of it. If you want a movie movie, you're not in luck. Speaking purely as an amateur cinema critique, it's bad. Its pacing is inconsistent and just plain weird. Daniel and I were dreading to watch Zardoz because we remembered it being about an hour longer than it actually was. And for an hour and 40 minute movie, it actually managed to fly by really quickly, believe it or not. But it unpacks so much conceptual stuff in your brain that going away from it, it felt like a lot more. Which is either a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you are. The actual movie moves from plot point to plot point, from weird stiff moment to weird stiff moment, and a lot of the basic plot points are even withheld until the end, which I don't know if it's bad? Let me put it this way, it's not that nothing's happening, it's that if you try to pay attention, any kind of serious plot escalation is almost imperceptible. It's like an interpretive dance that suddenly has a crescendo. It's like a thousand page book streamlined into the shape of a movie. What this is, is weird experimental shit that makes you feel like you're on brain expanding drugs. And I kinda have to respect that. And with experimental, I do mean experimental. For instance, despite it using a lot of heterosexual themes, bits of female nudity, and the most time spent with shirtless Harry dudes out of all the 70s movies I reviewed so far, its goal in featuring these themes isn't to be sexy, but rather to examine the idea of sexuality in a humanistic social sense. At least, I think that's what it's doing? I can't imagine how anyone would find this sexy. Penic erection was one of the many unsolved evolutionary mysteries surrounding sexuality. Every society had an elaborate subculture devoted to erotic stimulation. But nobody could quite determine how this becomes this. My gun's bigger than yours. But you can tell that this was John Borman's baby. And it really shows in the way some shots are done. Particularly the beginning and end really work for me. Despite its upfrontedness, you can tell they put a lot of thought into everything. Sean Connery is treated like an animal both by the characters and the camera. 
The way it's filmed and paced, it does remind more of a nature documentary than anything else. And somehow from that point, the movie manages to become a lot more than that as it goes on. When everyone is happily killed at the end, it does make you feel like a new beginning is at hand for this world. Arthur, we've all been used and reused and abused and abused. <laughs> what I'm saying is that it does a lot on an absurdly low budget, and the best way to describe it is that it's a low budget epic, and it's clear that it flew based on the conviction of the cast and crew alone. This movie originally started out as John Borman wanting to do Lord of the Rings, and despite the worlds that lie between what Zardoz's world ended up being and what it would take to do Middle-earth justice, that same wondrous Tolkien spirit does shine through, especially in the vibe and energy at the end, and the way it uses its locations throughout. It's kinda inspiring. Sure, it's silly, dated and ugly at times, but I couldn't imagine Zardoz any other way. It has character, it's terrible 70s sci-fi madness at its best, and that's what I love about it. Everybody may get something else out of this movie, but for anyone in the mood to give something unconventional a shot, something that while old and ultimately very silly, will leave you thinking and will stick in your mind for a very long time, I'd say watch it. If this doesn't sound that interesting to you, then don't. I have a soft spot for Zardoz, but I'm not telling you to watch a 47% on Rotten Tomatoes. You gotta make that call on your own. Zardoz speaks to you. Now with all that said, what extrapolation did Zardoz leave me with, you may ask? I don't know, be a good person, go outside, greatness can never be achieved by one generation alone as it takes multiple generations and a multitude of ideas to breed a healthy human society and plant a tree. I don't know, Zardoz is weird. All hail Zardoz. Zardoz! Somewhere beyond the scene, somewhere looking like a meme, wish I could fly like birds on high, and straight to her arms I'd go memeing. Go nerdy.